What's going on everybody? This is Afro Think Tank. Today I want to talk about how we live in the era of misinformation. As we are in the era of information, there's always an opposite and equal reaction to any force, and that is misinformation, right? And a lot of us live in misinformation, right? And we pass along misinformation, misinformation disguised as factual information, right? And so on the internet, you see a lot of people who want to be journalists. They want to be scholars. They want to be people of port of note. Or they have a passion about something, they want to talk about it. Right? But a lot of them, their foundation of knowledge is based on misinformation. Right? And then they run with it. And then just like a tree branch, they spread misinformation combined with the telephone effect, right? Which the misinformation changes and morphs and becomes several different versions of the same misinformation. And then people get offended and they get mad and they just spread all this false information. And before you, but by the time it branches off into a tree, there's no iota of truth or true information in that. But nonetheless, it has spread and bared fruit, right? Which, you know, also plants another tree of misinformation, right? And oftentimes I sit back, you know, and I think about how uninformed people really are and how shocked they would be if they knew the actual truth, right? How absolutely shocked they would be if they knew the actual truth. Now, what makes me, you know, what, what, what makes me know the truth and a lot of people don't, right? What, how is it that all of a sudden I can see the real world, I can see what's really going on, but, you know, other people can't? How can I speak on it, right? Well, just like a lot of other veterans, right? We went and, you know, we we learn what the real world is in the military because it created a certain set of circumstances that a lot of people don't they don't they're not put in these circumstances right so in the marine corps right when, or in the military in general what happens is most of the people who join the, the military are people of the lower class right and sometimes the middle class but mostly lower class, right? People who didn't have any mostly options to do anything else. You know, maybe they didn't have money for college. They had no, we are coming out of high school, they had nothing to do. You know, they had nowhere to go. And military is a great option and that's where they start recruiting you from the military, right? The recruiters, these salespeople who go to the best sales school in the world, military recruiters, they'll come with their shiny uniforms and tell you about all these benefits and how we can, you know, you can go off and do all these great things and naively, as a young child, basically, you believe it, right? So you go in there thinking that everything is, you know, you're going to be a hero, you're going to do this, you're going to do that. And But when you get in the military, what you start to meet, you start to meet people you've never met. You see, America is a very big landmass, right? And most people live within 100 miles of, well, Africans, we live within 100 miles mostly of our former uh, slave plantations, unless your, your ancestors uh, traveled to westwards for work, you know, uh, you know, for, for or went all the way to California for the gold rush, or, or for whatever reason, y'all, you know, we sprinkled ourselves throughout America. For the most part, we're in the southern, from Texas, the southern East Coast. That's Africa, America, right? But there are a group of people that even we don't even really encounter, right? Very often, and those are the Europeans from Middle America, right? The most ignored people. Now listen to me now. The most ignored group of people on the planet are poor white people in America, right? And was sad, right? Was really sad as a humanist, right? As a humanist, was sad is that what the elite do is that they ignore the poor white people in their conditions because it makes them look bad. It's not a good look for white people in general or the idea of white exceptionalism, right? So in order to make themselves look good and make and make everything look copacetic, they just act like it's not happening, right? But what happens is the truth comes out in the dirty details when those elite use those very same people, right, who are purposely being miseducated, right, so that they can be used as pawns and fodders to divide and conquer. See, divide and conquer is not just for black folks, right? The the elite oligarchs have been using the divide and conquer tactic for a very long time right so they not only need to divide and conquer black people they need to keep white people divided and conquered too white people poor white people need to be divided you got to understand the the 
rich white people don't give a shit about poor white people. They are what you call, we've all heard the phrase, white trash. They mean that. Trash. They're not relevant. They don't matter. They're expendable. They're fodder. They're cannon fodder, right? And what happens is, when they start saying stuff like, oh, uh, the black community, violence and crime, black on black crime, they want to hyper focus on their main enemy, which are the Africans. Because see, the rich elite know that their only reason they're rich and elite is because they stole stuff from African people. Despite what you African people, you African Americans, you ADOS, you FBA, whatever you want to call yours, you pretendians, whatever you like to call your, whatever makes you feel good, right? Whatever gives you value and boosts your ego. Despite what you think of yourself, the enemy sees you as an African. They have never, ever, 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 ever mistood you for anything else but an African. They know you're an African. They know it, right? They know your potential. They know what you're capable of, right? And so always, no matter what you look like, no matter what you call yourself, you are an African, whether you like it or not. And you are an African, in fact, right? So notice they like to concentrate on places like Chicago, right? As if Chicago is the only city in America. It's the only city in America to white supremacists, to white Christian conservatives who fall under the banner of, of, of white patriotism, pan-Europeanism, because what you guys don't realize is white right-wing Christian conservatism is a global pan-European oligarchy of white people trying to conserve white power, all right? So they're, they're pan-European. They want to keep you oppressed because the only way they can continue to win is to keep you oppressed as black people right and they must also keep the white people oppressed because they need a buffer between them and us and that's the poor white people right that's why uh back in the day when 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 uh slavery was abolished they just changed the name and started incarcerating us and then they took the poor white people and made them the correctional officers made them police officers you had to give them some power some false sense of power so they gave the poor white man a false sense of power, right? Then they made them feel insecure about that black person. So they were always afraid of black people, right? And But they gave them enough authority to lord over black people so that because the, the rich oligarchs are not going to do it, right? And that way we will always hate white people, the poor white people, because they're always oppressing us because they have that little semblance of power, right? And then while we're distracted battling each other, the rich oligarchs are coming along scooping all the wealth from both <laughs> our communities, Right. Right. So as much violence as they say is in the black community, there's more violence in the white community in America. But it's never is never never is never um, reported. And here's the trick in the details. When you see statistics, usually they do large samples in major cities. It just so happens African-Americans live in most major cities. Why? Major cities are the epicenter of the financial sectors of those states. Why? Because the people with the money concentrate in certain areas, usually by the coastline, right, where they can get export import. They're closest to the they're closest to the areas of ports where goods and services are provided, right? And these same companies are the same rich oligarchs that participated and facilitated the transatlantic slave trade. So literally, <laughs> so literally, the same corporations like Bank of America, J.P. Morgan, who are in New York. DC, Atlanta, right? The ancestors of the people who started these companies, their children, right? Their children are still there operating their 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 baby companies, right? Their offspring companies, right? And they still employ, right? The same the ancestors of the people they enslaved. So we who are in those metropolitan areas just so happens because we were the engines of economic prosperity. So we have to, we reside in the places where all the money is, right? So that's why we're in the bigger cities. That's why the cities have grown in large populations because that's where the opportunity is, right? When they do census, they do census on big cities. So of course, if you're doing that, there's not many big cities in middle of America, not big enough in population to count in any statistic. So it looks like in America, these 12% of black people are just committing all the crimes. They're just doing all the the worst shit we just inherently by by just our culture we just we just we deserve we deserve everything that the european oppressor does to us because we just can't help ourselves that's the narrative that they like to spin 
and all their collaborators, their POC collaborators, their black collaborators, collaborators who rather capitulate to white patriarch, patriarchy, oligarchy, the white system in order to have an easier life, because that's what they're doing. The ones who want you to forget about all the things that we've been through, they want us to forget about all the sacrifices our ancestors have made. Those ones who just want to say, hey, let's just forget about it and move forward because that's the easier route. Those guys, we call those black conservatives, Republicans, those guys who want us to just shut up. Let the white man do what they're going to do. Let's join the white man and sit at the table they provide for us and sit at the seat they gave us and eat the food they put down on us. And let them even cut our meat for us so we can eat the portions that they provide for us. That's what they want to do. Right? So in turn, they will spew out the same hatred, the same self-deprecating trash to reinforce to us that we ain't shit. That's why you got a lot of black people who absorb this, right? They 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 already they already have a, a low self-esteem, right? They have a low self-esteem because for 500 years we've been told we ain't shit. Even though in reality we are the shit. But for fake, they they told us we ain't shit. So a lot of people believe that. I mean, what do you expect? We didn't know any. That was our educational system. Every facet of society was telling us we ain't shit. We just now got to the point where the masses can find out that it's not that we ain't shit. It's we found out that we are the shit. And that's the damn problem, right? Because they want all of our shit, right? But so while they concentrate on us, they talk about what? Baltimore, Chicago. But Chicago is important because Chicago is a place that black people is a city, a stronghold for Africans. That's why it's important for Republican, conservative, Negroes, collaborator, traitors and white supremacists to always talk about Chicago because Chicago is important, is important to black people. It's very important to us because it's a major city we created. We have a lot of important, rich, well-to-do families in Chicago. We have a lot of businesses, and we've achieved a lot of things in Chicago. And Chicago is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful place, right? But they concentrate on a few neighborhoods where violence is happening. But they never talk about the violence in Kentucky. They never talk about the violence in Ohio. They never talk about the violence in Utah. They never talk about the violence in South Dakota, North Dakota. You know why? Because those are white people, 95% white. But there's violence happening there. White on white crime is an epidemic domestically, right? And white on white crime is an epidemic globally. Look at, you think just because they, they wear official uniforms, that's not white on white crime? You see what's happening in Europe? You don't consider that white on white crime because they have official camouflage uniforms? You know, we know they like to wear uniforms. Europeans have been conducting white on white crime their entire existence. They are the masters of self-deprecation and destruction, right? But back to the census, you see most white people, 70% of white people live in small towns because most white people just got here uh, within the century. They're from Europe. Black people, we've been here two, 300 years longer than most of these white people. They just got here. Matter of fact, they benefit from all our hard work because they didn't participate in this creation of America, even though we participated unwillingly for the most part. That nonetheless we participated, right? But most of these white people in there, they didn't participate, their ancestors didn't participate, they just got here, right? And most of them got here because America brought them here to have them work out there in the West, right? Lumber yards, coal, all these places, all these jobs that were created, and all these poor Irish, and Germans, and English, and Dutch, and French went way out West. They live in these woods, they're in the backwoods, they're in the hickeys, they're in the mountains, they're in the the Appalachian Mountains, they moved all the way out there to work for these major corporations, right? That because they could no longer enslave us, they couldn't no longer enslave us the way they would like to, which is the original form of capitalism. They just, they just backed up just a little bit and just changed the name from slavery to employment, right? All right, so you got all these white people who had great jobs out there. But now those jobs are, are going away because we're moving into different ages and just like the way of the horse and buggy, when the car came, it disrupted a, 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 the entire industry, all the horse and buggy and all the businesses and jobs that that uh, can encompass it around it. The same thing happened with the Industrial Revolution. The same thing's happening right now with robots and AI. It's a disruption. It's going to change everything. Nobody's, nobody's even prepared for it, right? So now there's going to be less and less jobs. Little do you know, most of white people are poor. 70% of white people are impoverished. 
They're on drugs. They're on fentanyl. They have the highest rate of, of murder. They have the highest rate of suicide. They do most of the drugs. Fentanyl is a major epidemic. Suicide is a major epidemic. Uh, b low birth rates is a major epidemic. Depression is a major epidemic in America for white, poor white Europeans because the system they live in, the same system we live in, but because we're used to that system, because we had, we were indoctrinated in a worse system and African people have a very good ability to cope with hardship. But Europeans, they don't have a very good ability to cope with hardship because they've been lied to just like we've been lied to. You see, when we were told that we ain't shit, they had to also tell those Europeans, the poor white people, that, that we ain't shit as well. Right? Because they, they need to raise their self-esteem to make them feel good about themselves, to make them feel better than us. Right? So they can be superior to us. See, white supremacy is actually a fallacy. It doesn't actually exist. It only exists in the minds of poor white people. The real power is in the oligarchy. The real power is with the 1%, the well-to-do, who laugh at their plan when they see the poor peasants fighting each other and totally distracted while allowing all these rich people to do what they do. While there's like four or five companies that own all of our houses, that own all of our grocery stores, they actually make companies to where we have to pay them, and if we don't, it's illegal, right? And all these five or six corporations, they own all the politicians that pass all the legislation that make it so they can make more money and they can also disenfranchise us as human beings. Same thing's happening in China. It's just a different way. Those people are slaves to their own people, right? It's always been the oligarchy, right? Who makes us, who they first you have to de-educate us because you can't control the educated population. That's a problem. You can't control the educated population. But the population is becoming more and more educated, right? So the oligarchy are getting more and more desperate because the tools they use, which is the pen, right, which is always mightier than this world, is no longer being effective because everybody now has a pen. So now, just like a rat stuck in a quarter, they're going hyperbolic. So they're pushing out all the propaganda, all the, alg all the algorithms have us fighting each other, right? Any type of crack or division is being exacerbated by the people that hold the power of the media. Right. But while all this is happening, while everybody's looking at African-Americans like we got problems, even though we are the progenitors of all the things that pretty much make life worth living today. As far as our technology, all of our advancement, that's us. Right. But still within our heads, we still haven't realized that. And we got a lot of black people that hate themselves so much that they just look. They look at the lowest common denominator and they just see all of that as black. They see all of that as African. But there's a lot of black community that's stuck and surrounded by white communities that make sure that the black community never gets to a certain level. There's a lot of black communities that doesn't, if they're, if they're not within the Africa, America of America, which is the southern eastern coast, the, the, the rich corridor of, 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 of the east coast of, of America, if they're not here, protected by the great body of Africans who at least have a stronghold on this side, if they're out there in the West or in California, they are encircled by people that don't have their best interests at hand, right? So I can see why even large or significantly large black populations don't have an opportunity to advance the way they want because they're always being inundated by interests that don't have their interests at heart, right? So you have large swatches of black neighborhoods that can't be developed because they don't use the tax money to develop their neighborhoods, right? But then that tax money, money get diverted to rich, affluent white neighborhoods, so they get uh, uh, good environmental services and their neighborhoods are clean. And then the rich oligarchs tell the poor white people, look at their neighborhood, the black neighborhood, look how dirty it is, right? And look at these this white neighborhood, look how clean it is. And they'll say, look, black people don't take care of their shit. And look how wonderful white people take care of their shit. Like there's a bunch of white people going outside picking trash up off the ground. Like white people inherently don't throw trash out the car or don't drop a Snickers uh, wrapper on the ground when they're walking or don't drop their two liter Dodge Pepsi uh, on the ground after they finish it. Like they don't do the same thing. It's the money that's being diverted to public services that, that makes the difference between whether a place has good schools, uh, quality education, clean neighborhoods. So it's the government that facilitates these things. So there's no indication on the people themselves. The indication is on this apparatuses that's supposed to be spending our tax money to keep our neighborhoods clean because that's what the government is for. The government is there and is supposed to be facilitating our livelihoods, but they don't do that. They work for the rich oligarchs to make them even richer. We're about to have trillionaires 
We're about we're getting to the point where there's going to be trillion. We have trillionaire companies and there's going to be trillionaire individuals. And that means there's going to be a few people that own about 70, 80 percent of the world's money. Can you believe that? And, and slowly but surely, you're now in the age of information, you're starting to see them same poor white people complain about the same things we've been complaining about every day. Every day, we, the stuff we complain about, the, the, the traumas that we're going through, you see poor white people all of a sudden come into a realization that they're also the same victims of the system that they also perpetuated because they thought they were more important than us. They thought they, they had more value than us. They thought that they were actually part of that club called white. But they're not really a part of that club called that club called white was made up to pretend make them think that they got power the same thing the europeans did in, in africa when they gave when they purposely gave the muslims power over the christian africans they gave the arabs or the light skins more power more power over the dark skin they created a false sense of value so that these people would be puffed up with the ego and false sense of importance and they can lord over people who they was already conditioned to believe that they were they were superior to same thing in india look at the way the whole india society if you white it's right if you dark you're 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 a subhuman you're a barbarian you see how it works? They create classes in order to create a controllable oligarchy that they can use to suppress the, the vast majority of people so that they never have to be held accountable. And the most dangerous thing to that oligarchy is an informed, intelligent mass. Do you have you ever heard of the Bacon Rebellion? The Bacon Rebellion was a situation in which Africans and, Af and, and white people, at that point, before the Bacon, Bacon Rebellion in America, white people were slaves poor white people were slaves right along with africans like slaves getting whipped getting beat because they was beating them in europe before they brought them over here white people has never been treated better than black people but they've been told they were treated that's the that's the whole thing europeans have been since their existence the elites of their of their race have been treating them like slaves they were slaves over here they were beaten and living in the same shitty ass shacks eating the same shitty ass food be working sun up to sundown just like us and guess what happened those poor black people and them poor white people created militias and start fighting against the oligarchy and we almost were almost won and they were scared as shit they knew they could never allow that to happen and that's when they figured out we got to trick these poor white folks we got to make them guys think they're a little bit better we have to we have to do it because if we don't our oligarchy is over our authoritarian rule will be over and it's coming to an end it's, it's gonna come people like elon musk and all these rich people who got their millions off the backs of, of africans because keep in mind elon musk and all his money is african money everything he got is because him and his daddy stole it from africa keep that in mind him and his family are criminals right yet we praise people like that and we say that's the american dream the dude's a bore right he's a criminal illegal alien offspring of criminal illegal aliens who who exploit Africans and now he's using his money to you know advance society which is I mean I guess the result is is, is great you know but I'm sure we could have got here another way right but to be the honest truth is we can sit here all day and pretend like black people are, are, are just dilapidated we ain't doing shit but in the real world guess what black people are actually doing pretty goddamn good we're one of the rich African Americans are one of the richest listen African Americans if you think about how many different groups there are in the world, right? Right? First of all, white is a misnomer. There's no such thing as a white person, right? That was made up. That's a club. Just like FBA is a club, ADOS is a club. White is actually a club. That's why it's okay to talk about it because it's not real, right? Black people are, we are one of the richest African Americans, are one of the richest groups, period, in the world. We have more money as a group of people and more resources as a group of people then countries all right including most european countries our gdp is bigger than countries you got to understand now do we always know what to do with our money no but do anybody when they talk about african americans not having been financially physical are white people financially physical are those 70 percent of white european americans financially physical did they get financial education in their schools no only the elite well to do did and that doesn't include the 70 percent of white people black on black crime misnomer why because most people live within their most crimes are personal most crimes are within the community 
So of course, most of the times it's going to be a black person killing a black person. Just like most of the time it's going to be a white person killing a white person. Because crime is usually personal. Murder is personal. You got to be in vet. You, to, in order for your impulse control to get to the point where you got to actually kill somebody, you have a relationship with that person, whether tumultuous or not. Right? Most Asian people are killed by other Asian and white people, actually. Because white people kill more Asian people. But it only took a few news cycles from right wing propagandists to get everybody believing it was black people going around uh, beating up beating up Asian people so they had to uh, pass a Asian crime bill. But in actuality, 90% of those attacks were white people attacking Asian people. But they just got to show you two videos of a black person attacking an Asian and then the whole world believes it because that's how quick misinformation spreads across the internet. But in actuality, it's white people, right? So while you have some white people who are sitting there believing this shit is sweet, they're drowning, right? They're drowning up. They're up to their, their knees in, in, in destruction and, in just, and just degenerateness, right? While actually coming at their mouths talking about black people, they ain't never even meet black people. They never met black people. The reason why I I know these things is because I've met these white people in the Marine, in the Marine Corps. I, I've met white people, like being from the DMV, I, I've seen a certain type of white person, right? Grew up with a certain type of white person. But I never had to experience all these other type of white people until I got in the Marine Corps. And then they start telling me why they joined the Marine Corps. They start telling me about their communities and how they suffer and how how crime is bad, drugs is bad, how the educational system is bad, how their schools bad, how their houses is bad. And then one day I was with this 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 Navy corpsman, dude looked like the, the mascot off Mad TV. He's about the same size, red head, freckles. I got in his car one day and he took me to a trailer park. Now I'm thinking I'm from the hood. I'm from D.C., Southeast. What? Quit playing with me. Let me tell you something. I went to a trailer park in North Carolina and I was afraid I was the most I've been to Afghanistan all right I've been to war in other places that I can't mention in some places but I ain't never been as afraid as I was in that trailer park and I'm not even bullshitting the trailer park was the most dangerous place I've ever been to in my life I thought I knew what poverty was until I went to a trailer park all white all white and what I didn't know was my boy he was a Navy corpsman he was selling drugs to somebody in a, in a double wide which was crazy I can't believe I was with I was I was with oh shit y'all trying to get me arrested right? I can't be here right but I got to experience what white poverty looks like firsthand and it's horrible it's worse than I ain't never seen a black hood as bad as a, as a white neighborhood but guess what none of that matters to the white power system because that shit don't exist because they're white trash they don't even get included all right listen in the real world, white people and black people are suffering the exact same way in this country, minus the extraness when it comes to the racism and how we're being murdered by the police. But, but, here's another truth. Poor white people get murdered by the police too. Poor white people get beat up and shot by the police for reaching in their pocket and pulling out a, a phone or stuff like that. that happens but it doesn't make the news it makes local news you can find it if you really want it but it doesn't make the news entertainment networks it doesn't right it doesn't make it because it doesn't fit the narrative even liberal white people don't really want to talk about it because they're white too right so they kind of just don't talk about it. you see liberal white people don't talk about it conservative white people they deflect and talk about the other the the what about is that's what they do right but overall they have an agreement we're just going to not talk about it. But every now and then you'll get a brave European who will speak truth to power. Every now and then you get somebody who will tell tr tell the truth despite his people telling them not to do it. And a lot of them brave because they live on a, they have a code, right? And some of these white people are risking their lives going off code to tell the to, to say the silent parts out loud, right? And it's our duty. It's your responsibility to be uh, uh, to intake information and learn to comprehend because a lot of you black people can't comprehend a lot of human beings can't come a lot of white people can't comprehend and it's important it's your responsibility to be able to comprehend because like for instance you got people that think Brandon is a pan-african there is no there is absolutely no reason while in the age of information where you can pick up your phone and type in pan-africanism and have a wealth of information the ideology uh, historical Pan-Africans, the political view of Pan-Africans, there's no way you can, 
you in this age of information that with all that information being laid out for you that you can say that he's a pan-african that you can actually come out parse your lips and and and, and put him in the cat category as pan-african that's because you're being misinformed because you don't have the proper information your foundation of knowledge is misinformation but stupid people don't know you're stupid a lot of stupid people think they're the smartest people in the room that's how you can always find the stupid person because the stupid person thinks they are the most intelligent person in the room an intelligent person knows he doesn't know very much and he's always seeking more information an intelligent person is humble and always has his cup open ready to pour more information an intelligent person has both his ears open so he can receive information an intelligent person knows how to take information and change his thought change his ideological thinking change his position based off new information an idiot thinks he knows it all and when new information comes in he does not receive it and he rebuttal he doesn't even process it doesn't even take it into consideration that's how you can find an idiot and they some idiots actually come off as looking very intelligent some of them know a few big words but they don't know the definition of those words all right and they were in and, and you can see those people because they repeat the same word because they heard somebody else say it and it makes them sound smart but in the real world did you know crime is down in america crime is at a historical low in chicago crime is at a historical low in baltimore Cl crime is at a historical low in washington dc crime is at a historical low in atlanta crime is at a historical low in texas crime is at a historical low in florida Crime is at a historical low in the African-American community. See, in the real world, the African-American community is moving away from thugism. Even though social media and uh, the, the, you know, the, the George Soros media. And by the way, let me explain something. When people say George Soros, that's actually a tactical way to say Jews. So anytime you hear a conservative say George Soros, what you're saying is Jews are sponsoring this thing. Let me repeat that. When a conservative says the word George Soros, it's code for Jews, just so you know, all right? So, damn, where was I going with that? I, I just wanted y'all to know that that's what that means, right? But in the real world, African-American movies, um, African-Americans are moving away from thugism. In the real world, African Americans are developing businesses in their stronghold. In the real world, African Americans are seeping into politics and carving out their own spot within the political parties that allow them to carve out their own spot, locally and federally, in the real world. In the real world, African people are empowering themselves to the point that where there's gonna be a tipping point that where we're taking over, in the real world. In the real world, Africans on the continent of Africa are also empowering themselves because they're armed with information and they're able to use that to empower themselves economically. That's what's happening in the real world. In the real world, all Africans are rising. That's what's happening in the real world. Right? Now, just like all societies, in every point of history, you will always have criminality within every community, period. But let the social media tell you criminality is a black thing and it's an epidemic that's out of control and we can't handle it. No, criminality is a human thing that will never go away as long as there's a such thing as human beings and there's a such thing as earth. As a matter of fact, if we ever get to the point where we're on other planets, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure there'll be crime there too. There's no such thing as a crimeless society. Will we ever get to a crimeless society? I don't know. That's something I can't I can't even say yes. All right? So, we can't just be take we can't we can't just take crime and say that's just a, we, that's that's the whole community. No, that's a symptom of the capitalistic system in which we live in. It forces people to be desperate. As you can tell, look at the world right now. Nobody can afford anything. Nobody can afford to to have families. Nobody can afford to go out and do anything. Nobody's even going out and do anything because the corporations that we worship because we buy their products and we're forced to buy their houses. We're forced to rent in their apartments. We're forced to buy their cars. We're forced to buy their insurance. We're forced to put our money in their banks. All of those people make all the rules that make our lives a living hell. 
And then we, in turn, because we're being miseducated, we blame the peasant. We blame our brethren. We blame the other poor guy across the street for our own issues when it's really them people up there we should be blaming. Right? So, yes, the trick works. The propaganda is working. But, like I said, this is the age of information. Right? So, you have truth tellers pushing back against the, 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 the liars. I came to the light with the truth. My moment of, of truth for me, when I, I say I took the, like the matrix, right? When they took the pills, like, hey, you can either continue to pretend like all this that you believe is really happening, or you can take this pill and see what the real world is. That's what happened to me. I ended up taking the, the one pill that showed me the real world. And I think my aha moment was in Afghanistan. I had several, you know? When I got to Afghanistan, you know, we're sitting there, you know, fighting and shit, doing the whole war thing. And I noticed a few things. I noticed that there were lots of heroin everywhere, poppy seed and marijuana. And then I noticed that because during the time they were burning it, they would show on the news, they would show, oh, uh, we're burning this, we're burning that, we're doing this, right? It, it was all for TV. But when I was there, we weren't burning any of that poppy seed. As a matter of fact, the DEA were over there. And they were almost as deep as we were. And so I started scratching my head. Why is the DEA here in Afghanistan with me? I had to help them because they had robots and shit. I was working. I was special ops. So I'm working with the DEA. And we're like using robots, doing all this shit. And I'm like, why am I doing this? This is not, this don't make sense, right? I was like, why am I with the DEA in Afghanistan? What is the DEA doing in Afghanistan? Why are they there? That's my, that was my question. All right, so that was one aha moment for me. Another aha moment was this one time we had to go on uh, on patrol, and me and my squad we went into the city, and we went inside the palace of a warlord, right? And and I was like, okay, so we going on patrol, we taking these guys with us. Come to find out, they were the Taliban, and I'm a squad leader, so. We had to, we added to our squad because we were going out to go find the Taliban to go kill them, right? That was the, that was what we go went to go do. So I'm saying, so I'm questioning. I'm like, why am I in this compound with this warlord who came out? But I shook his hand like we was like he came out and he's talking to us. I said, why am I talking to this warlord and why are there these Talib? Why am I standing next to the Taliban and I'm supposed to be going out shooting these people? I, I'm supposed to be this, this supposed to be the op. But I'm with them. Why am I with them? Right? And then they gave me three of them. So I had three Talibans to my squad. So it was three Marines, three Taliban, and they said, you're going to go walk umpteen trillion miles. We're going we're gonna to truck you out umpteen trillion miles that way, and then you're going to get out and you're going to walk umpteen trillion miles the other way, and you're going to do that about two days, and you're going to walk umpteen trillion miles back, and then we're going to come pick you up, and then we're going to bus you, and we're going to truck you tri uh, all the way back to the file. I'm on patrol with the Taliban. You do you hear what I'm saying? I'm on patrol with the Taliban. They got AK. I'm I'm like I don't even know you. You behind like this shit was weird. And we you know we did our thing out there, but you know, and I never trusted them though. I couldn't even go to sleep. Two days I couldn't go to sleep because I was like, if I sleep, these guys gonna shoot me. I know it. I was paranoid. It made no sense. And I also didn't understand why was all our white officers, officers, all of them, well, we had some black officers too, but mostly white. Why all of our white officers stayed in the palace with the Taliban uh, general while we was outside of the city living in holes? Huh? That didn't make no sense to me either. I was like, why y'all get to live it big up in the, with the, 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 the Taliban guy? Why y'all get to live it big up in there? Officers, right? Why we out in the dirt for months and they living in large. They got satellite TV. They got cable. They got all this shit. We in the middle of fucking Afghanistan. Shit was nuts. That was an aha moment for me. I was like, oh shit. Right? Then I realized that, that then I did some, Af did you know Afghanistan is one of the only place poppy seed grows? Poppy seed. Did you know that Cambodia and, Th and, and uh, Southeast Asia, uh, that's where poppy seed grows. So I was like, we are over here to secure poppy seed. Poppy seed is the major crop in Afghanistan. We are over here securing shit for the medical industry. So they can overcharge us for the shit we buy here. That's where I woke up. I said, oh, 
I got the fantasy world that I thought I was living in. Now I got this real world that I'm forced to live in. Once you get into the real world, you, 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 can't, you can't get back in. Every one of my veterans who was in Afghanistan, who was in Iraq, know this. Because my boys in Iraq, they realized the bullshit when they was there. When they was going and finding all that cash and shit, all gold bars and shit in these houses. That America was trucking crates of cash to certain groups so they could empower them to do shit. That's why when we left Afghanistan, like, listen, we never left Afghanistan. We've been working with, we created the Taliban. And we killed some Taliban we didn't like. And we allowed the Taliban we don't, we, that we work with to control the country. And the government that was there who we were fighting against, against the Taliban, was just as bad to their people as the Taliban. There is no difference. So while all you guys on TV think that, oh, we ran away from Afghanistan, no. It was a strategic move to control Afghanistan. Because we're still in Afghanistan. Special ops, special forces, uh, uh, private contractors, and all the three ledger agencies are still in Afghanistan. It's easier to control somebody when they're sitting in the office building downtown than it is to control them when they're hiding in the fucking mountain. All right? That's just tactics. But people who don't know about war and tactics and all that shit and all that, y'all don't understand. Y'all just see what the TV wants you to believe. They just want you to believe that. So once I became aware of the real world, I started seeking and only accepting real shit. I can't unreal it. So when I hear people lying, like just blatant lying, like for instance, every all these black conservatives and, and all these people, uh, all these crazy people talking dumb propaganda shit that they listen on Fox News. When I listen to Fox News, I can hear all the lies, right? When I hear all these crazy ass liberals and shit just accepting fucking everything, you can be this and be that, and you know, you're not gonna tell me a man is a, is a woman and a woman is a man when clearly that's a man, it's a woman. You're not gonna tell me that. I'm not accepting what it is that you're trying to manifest out of your own creativity. I'm not accepting the fact that you don't want any rules and regulations. I don't accept that, right? Now, I'm not gonna try to fight and kill and hurt you for it, but you ain't gonna make me accept it. If I see a, a dude in the dress, yes, sir. That's just what it is. So respect my pronouns. I, you want me to respect you? Respect my, my pronouns. Respect my visual pronouns. My, my eyes identify you as a man, even if you identify yourself as a woman. That's just what it is. And that's how I'm going to be. Because I can't live in the fans, this fantas, fantical world. I don't have that luxury anymore. A lot, it, they say ignorance is bliss, right? Ignorance is bliss, I swear. People be happy as shit, being dumb as hell. Just blissfully don't know, not, not aware of the surroundings. But when you're aware, you can't turn that off. It's like, oh, shit. You see it all. And I see it. <laughs> okay? So we have to do better as a group of people and take just a little bit more time when receiving information, right? And processing that information and actually looking at it, right? Use them. Use those skills that you learned in school. I know school didn't teach us that much, right? But there are some, skill, some skills that we use, right? You know, so we can find out what's true or not. So we can find out where the true elements is are in the story. You got some people that won't accept information just because of the person that's delivering it. That's how single, closed-minded they are. They don't know how to find the truth in the information. They're judging the messenger instead of dealing with the message. You have to deal with the message. Just because you have a personal issue with the person that's delivering the message doesn't mean that the message is in fact not true or untrue or not it could be accurate right but because some of us we can't get past our feelings we can't get past our egos right we dismiss the information so because of that we're missing out every piece of information true information you put in your brain is armor all right every every time you add add information to your brain you're getting smarter bit by bit by bit you're training your brain and when you get repetitive on, on learning how to discern what is true and what is not, at some point you'll become a master and nobody can lie to you. And that's the great tool. And that's free. You don't have to go to a university to learn these skills. You can literally YouTube it. <laughs> you can do that now. You can just, matter of fact, you ain't even got a YouTube. You can ask, you can ask chat GPT how to do it. And it'll tell you. All right, because that's where we at. So I just want to talk about how despite the political theater or what these uh, 
these politicians who are political sports players who are sponsored by the oligarchies that we all pay our bills to, despite the shit that they say out of their mouth, both liberal and both conservative and the guys in the center too, despite that shit, there is a real world that we live in and there's real world consequences despite what you think. Despite what you believe is going to happen, there's something that's going to happen. Like, in the real world, African people are soon to take over the world. We're taking over every aspect of this planet. It's happening. May not happen within our lifetime, but I bet you didn't think that Africa was going to rise in our lifetime. I bet you didn't think there were going to be African presidents telling uh, America to flipping the bird to America. I bet you never thought that was going to happen. I bet you never thought Africa, uh, there was going to be African countries that give the bird to France. I bet you never thought that was going to happen. There's a lot of things happening on the continent of Africa and within the African-American and the Caribbean communities that a lot of people never thought, not even 20 years ago, that they ever thought was going to happen and it's happening now. And just like uh, just like money compound, if you know anything about finance, how things compound, right? The success of black people are compounding and it's overwhelming. So yes, Europeans had and held power in institutions, but Africans are building our own, our own institutions and they're growing because we are realizing that we are the ones who have the resources, we have the intelligence, we have the power, the capability, and we're stronger and we got guns now too. And the only difference was that gun because before the gun, European couldn't do nothing. But when they got that gun, it was the great equalizer. It was their advantage, but they don't have that advantage anymore. That's why black person with gun bad, white person with gun patriot, once you know the truth, all these little bullet points start to make way more sense. You understand? So, you know, I just want black people to keep doing what you're doing. We're winning. Your grandchildren are going to be winning. Your great grandchildren are not even going to know any. They're going to be reading about this shit. We just have to keep doing what we're doing. But we can make it go faster if we eliminate some of the ignorance, cut some of the fat, get rid of the xenophobia. Stop fighting with each other because we don't have time to fight with each other. And if you want to fight with each other, fucking just fight the other people and then we can get back to each other. How about that? Fight the enemy first, then we can fight in the house. Right? Because while you got your back towards the enemy fighting each other, they're stabbing you in the back. While you got your back towards each other, concentrating, got your eyeballs on you, the enemies is surrounding you. Taking tactical position. Setting up ambushes. Waiting for you to stop waiting for you to, when you're finished with your distraction, to turn around and get deleted, just like that. That's what they're doing, right? You know, uh, you know, what's the word? Not literally, but the other word, shit. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, so we just have to get smarter. It's up to you for the content consumer to know how to comprehend information. Know what a Pan-African is. Know what pro-black is. Know what unity looks like. Understand what that means. Yes, you can delineate, but you can delineate with, with respect. You don't have to disrespect other African people to be proud of your African group. And it's not just African, you Ebo, your Ebos, Yorubas, Hausas, Akan, Nigerians, Ghanaians, African Americans, it's all tribalism. It's all tribalism. That's it. Within African Americans, you got Af black people that, that fighting and kill each other over neighborhoods they don't own. Over blocks they didn't build. Right? And that's supposed to be FBA? That's unity? We need to work on that. We need to work on black people being smart enough and have impulse control and have an ability to get along with their brothers and sisters even though they got problems. We have to work on that. We have to get it out our children's head that that block that you fighting for don't give a shit about you. It doesn't. Right? We have to eliminate that personally within our community. And we also have to understand and learn how to have pride for one's group. If you want to delineate, if you want to make sure that you're well-defined as an African-American, which when I'm in Africa, guess what? I'm an African-American in Africa. I'm an African-American Yoruba chief. I didn't give up my African-Americanness to be a Yoruba chief. I didn't have to give it, and they didn't ask me to give it up. It wasn't a requirement, right? You can be proud to be African-American. You should be proud to be Jamaican. You should be proud to be Nigerian. You should be proud to be from Ghana. Every one of our groups have reasons to be proud of ourselves. And being proud of ourselves doesn't mean we have to shit on the other group. And we also must understand within our groups, we have idiots. And just because you run into a few idiots who are stupid and hateful doesn't mean you need to react in kind and be stupid and hateful right along with them. 
Because the thing that you're reacting to, the thing that you hate, you become that thing. And all you did was double it up. So instead of having two, now we got four. Idiots. You need to be above it. You need to understand why they're being idiots. Make a teachable moment. Because I'm telling you, nine times out of ten, you can make an idiot smart. An idiot can become smart. But a smart person cannot become an idiot. So the more you can educate, the better we will be in the future. Once y'all start talking shit, there's not really a conversation happening. All you're doing is stroking your ego, but you're not, you're not, you're not, uh, you're not doing anything. When you're talking shit about your brothers and sisters, all you're doing is stroking your own ego in front of everybody. That's what you're doing, but you're not accomplishing anything. You're not getting anywhere. You're spinning around in a circle. That's what you're doing. You're spinning around in a circle like a clown while somebody's standing outside waiting for you to stop, pop you in their goddamn head. We gotta stop spinning. We have to elevate, we have to evolve. That is the only way we're all collectively gonna win. Now keep in mind, everybody's not going with us. Some people are still gonna be degenerate. They just, that's their nature. Black, white, Asian, and different. They're gonna be, they're gonna be like that. But you, if you consider yourself an intelligent uh, African, an intelligent, you know, human being, you're supposed to be above that. You're supposed to be trying to reach to go climbing higher than that. That's what you're supposed to be doing. Not getting down in the mud with them. The only reason you should get down in the mud and fight is if you're gatekeeping something with honor that has a value. But an African American just, just talking shit about a Nigerian or a Jamaican just because, you know, for what? You think that the white man is gonna favor you African Americans over a Jamaican or an African to give you a butter biscuit and make sure he don't give them any butter biscuits? All you use is niggas to them. Keep that in mind while you fighting each other, all right? Anyway, I'm gonna wrap this up. Hope y'all get what I'm saying. You just be better at communicating. Be be smarter. As a, as a consumer of information, be smarter. Because we got a lot of grifters out here that prey on your ignorance. There's a lot of Pro black for pay out here. All their videos are hey, pro black buy this, pro black buy this, pro black donate to me, pro black get my cash app, pro black uh uh mo money, pro black, and then they get mad at you when you don't give them money. Think about that. The grifters they start to become the snake comes out of the grass at some point. Can't stay in the grass forever. All right. So anyway, tell me what you guys think in the comment section about this. this is Afro Think Tank, learn seats, something teach them. I'm out.